So I've just undone the clamps. I pull off the volcano tube there. And you can see the turning ball here. Now, if you're doing an inspection on your boat every season, you should probably check this. The intent of this channel is if you're handy and you don't have unlimited funds, our intention is to show you how to take something that could be very inexpensive because it needs some work or something that is actually on the verge of being scrapped or discarded and using that opportunity to get you out there and enjoy it. All right, folks, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you my preparation for changing the keel cable and the bottom paint. So, obviously, this is a trailer sailor, and you can see that I've got the bow stand uh, pretty far back on the bow, and then I have the two rear stern stands set back here. And then what I've done, once that's stabilized, what I've done is I've let the air out of the tires all the way around on the trailer, and I let the trailer come down. You can see that I've got space between my rollers and the hull, and the boat is nice and stable. And what I do is I put some cribbing between the frame rail of the trailer and here to stabilize it even further. I'll show you that in a little while. But what that does is that allows the keel to swing down far enough to get at this pin that's right here that holds the cable in and um, also when I do the bottom paint with the keel being down like this I can paint in the channel that uh, with the bottom paint so the keel comes down just enough it's resting on the trailer so there's no tension on the cable and I'm gonna go in and undo that pin right now so I can pull the cable up through and replace it on the winch. So those of you who own a Catalina 25 you know that the winch is underneath the stairs and there's a little face plate here that covers it up and it's a tow kick so you don't put your toe into the winch. So you, you undo the screws that hold that in place and there's your winch. The winch is held in by three bolts and very special washers that have the countersink in it so when you step on the companionway stairs you're not um, dealing with the heads of bolts when you order new bolts from Catalina direct it tells you that it does not come with replacement washers they're no longer available and they're not having a manufactured so you have to reuse the washers so we undo the screws here another screw, uh, through bolt here a through bolt down here and a through bolt down here and the stairs come off and the winch comes with it and when your cable is loose you can just kind of lay the stairs uh, back and access the winch and the cable and everything else that's down here that needs attention I'll show you that in a minute okay folks so I've undone the stairway and I have just slowly turned the winch handle and allowed it to pay out some cable so I can set the stairway off to the side this is what the winch looks like from the back I want to show you how this cable comes through the drum. The first wrap of the cable on the drum comes through this hole. You have to go around the spindle here. All this moves together so this isn't going to continue to get wrapped around but what it does is it takes some of the pressure off of this little cable clamp here and um, part of the replacement parts when you change a cable you get a new cable clamp or you can order a new cable clamp. So um, if you take your winch off you see that you have an angled shim here so the cable is at the correct angle going through the tube that goes down to the keel so um, you really want to make sure that your winch is operating properly if this winch fails then the keel will drop and it could potentially crack the hull so one of the maintenance items is make sure this works perfect you cannot replace this with a boat winch. There's warnings all over the place in the forums and in Catalina Direct. You cannot replace this with a standard boat winch because this has an internal braking system that when you're lowering the keel, it goes down at a controlled rate. And um, when you raise the keel, it has the ratcheting mechanism 
So do not try to replace this with something that's not specifically designed to raise and lower the keel of your Catalina. Just a warning. Now this is what they call like the volcano tube. This goes all the way down to a through hull uh, in, the, in the trunk for the keel. And I'll show you that in a minute. The previous owner put this piece of PVC in here so when you um, we store things um, under the stairs and when you drag stuff in and out you don't want to hurt this um, volcano tube um, and I'll show you the reason for that in a minute okay so this is the volcano tube and this is made out of very heavy duty steel reinforced hydraulic hose and it's got fastened to the through hole that goes down into the keel channel or trunk that's underneath and there's a brass fitting in here the hose clamps that clamp this down are clamped to the brass tube when you undo the clamps and pull the tube off it actually exposes the little shaft that holds on to the turning ball and I'll show you all that in a minute so the turning ball shaft is actually captured and held in place by this volcano tube the flexible rubber tube and then further by these two hose clamps uh, I bought brand new Catalina Direct hose clamps because they're specifically designed for the purpose. They're all stainless steel so they won't corrode. This hose was replaced four years ago so it's still in excellent condition. If yours is deteriorated at all, I would highly recommend replacing it. If you don't know when it's been replaced, just go ahead and do it. This is basically an open hole right to the water and the tube is up well beyond the height of the water line you can see that it's almost up to the cockpit floor here it's about six inches below so um, if there's some splashing going on uh, if you're reversing the motor um, the force of the propeller can actually um, force water and it comes up inside the tube and sometimes it will bubble out of here so um, if the tube comes off, now you're only, you know, two or three inches above the water line. I mean, excuse me, you're um, about flush with the water line of the boat here. And uh, anytime you go over a wave or uh, a wake or anything like that, or the um, going through a seaway, the water is going to continue to splash out of this. So this tube is necessary to raise the height in which uh, the water remains out of the boat and it doesn't come up through the tube. So I've just undone the clamps and I pull off the volcano tube there and you can see the turning ball here now if you're doing an inspection on your boat every season you should probably check this especially on the Catalinas that require a cable to pull this up and down. If this turning ball gets frozen the cable will skid on this and it'll actually wear through the bronze turning ball the, the turning ball is made out of bronze and the turning ball resides on a stainless shaft this is the through hull that is bonded into the trunk for the keel and again that volcano tube captures the shaft that's right here it's a stainless shaft I'm going to tap that out in a minute but you can actually do irreversible damage to your cable if you do not keep your turning ball free this acts as a guide and a pulley when the uh, keel is all the way down and you're winding it back up as the cable passes through it actually turns the turning ball so you want to make sure that's free if it's not and it skids it'll wear through the bronze into the stainless shaft and you're going to start fraying the cables and compromise the strength so this is a good inspection item every year pop that tube off take a look at it maybe take it apart throw some lubrication on it and um, I am replacing it because I'm replacing the cable so I'm looking out at the ground through the tube that the cable goes through you can see the turning ball has no no wear on it it spins freely on the shaft so I'm very happy about that I'm relieved 
that I wasn't getting any damage to my keel cable. Uh, and this has been in the boat for this would have been the fifth season, so four active seasons. Um, I'm very happy about that. I'll keep this as a spare, and um, we're going to replace everything with new. Okay, folks, I've started putting it back together. I've got the turning ball in place. You can see that the bronze turning ball is moving nice and free. I did lubricate it with some... Um, anti-seize compound um, I didn't I did this before and I didn't uh, when I did it four years ago I didn't find any remnants of this left but I think it gives it a fighting chance when you first put it in the water um, it's coated with something and um, it's bronze against stainless so it shouldn't, shouldn't seize up anyway one thing I wanted to point out here is this is the stern of the boat in that direction you want to make sure that the cable is behind the turning ball towards the stern side of the boat end of the boat if it's not the cable will actually wear through your bronze uh, through hull and it'll actually act as a saw and start cutting through and it'll do damage to the cable and it'll ruin your bronze through hull and you'll have to haul the boat to get it fixed so towards the stern the cable should be in relationship to the turning ball the other thing is is before you connect it to the winch you've got to thread it through the volcano tube your hose clamps and in my case the little PVC hose um, or piece of tubing that just kind of acts as a cosmetic um, feature if you will um, if you're using the quarter berth cushions the PVC keeps the cushion off of the vol volcano tube or this hydraulic hose so make sure you thread everything through before you attach the cable to the winch because if not you're gonna have to do one end or the other uh, undo it and this end is probably easier than the other end because you would have to get it undo the turning ball again and snake the cable and the clevis back through the through hull. So just make sure you do this um, when you go to put it back together. Make sure everything is threaded before you put the winch cable on. Alright folks, I've got the tube on. I've got two hose clamps on it. I've oriented the part to engage the hose clamp in a direction that's favorable I can get it from the quarter berth hope opening and I can get it through this access port that's under the stairs just like any through hole fitting you want to make sure that you have two good quality camps on, uh, clamps on your connection and um, tighten them appropriately and uh, now we're ready to reassemble the winch and put the stairs back in place Alright folks, so what I've done after maybe two hours of, as Mads on Sail Life says, glorious, glorious sanding, probably five or six of these sanding pads, um, I took the original finish off of the stairway and I put on three coats of Pettit Captain's Varnish. I'm going to try this this year. I'll let you know what the, the wear characteristics and the longevity of it is. But somebody had done a lot of work on staining the wood using polyurethane and because that's more of a plasticish coating it would chip off and things like that so I sanded it clear to the wood down to the teak and then I put captain's varnish on it I really like the the quality of the finish better on this and um, I just hope that uh, the wear characteristics are decent on it and uh, one of the things I'll have to do is somebody I'm not sure if this is factory or not but somebody had put the anti-skid strips on and I'm going to once the stairs are installed again I'll put the anti-skid on all three steps so one thing I wanted to mention here folks is that because the winch is mounted to these stairs and the way that it's attached to the boat this assembly here is structural it is literally supporting over half of the keel weight so you're talking 
at least 750 pounds of tension on that cable that gets transmitted into this set of stairs. So if your stairs are showing any sign of being compromised in strength or they're loose or wobbly, you really want to make sure that it is uh, repaired or rebuilt and capable of withstanding the load. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, so my next thing I want to show you is when I go down to the boat and put these back in, I'm going to rewind the cable on the spool for the winch and then um, pretty much the keel installation, the cable replacement process is completed. So I'll show you that when I get to it. Alright folks, so when you're putting the new cable on the winch, you go behind the drum, around the top of the drum, feed the loose end of the cable through, go around the spindle, and then to the cable clamp. This significantly re reduces the tension here at the cable clamp. This cable clamp is not designed to hold the weight of the keel. The other advantage is, is that when you have the keel all the way down, there's still a few wraps of cable on the drum which also significantly reduces the tension on any of this restraining method. Um, I have started feeding the new cable onto the drum of the winch and you want to make sure that it's laid in nice across the drum so they're not overriding each other or overlapping each other because that significantly increases the wear. And in this process, by doing it now, you're actually training the cable to go around the drum um, in these tight turns. So the trick now is to keep tensioning the cable until the stairs go into position over here so we keep uh, some tension on the cable and that will keep this cable, um, the wraps positioned properly on the drum and then I'll put a little weight on there to make sure that there's some tension on the keel. So I'll show you how that works in a minute. One of the things that I want, think is very important when you are raising your keel you should be hearing this clicking. That click is the raising direction. If you do not hear that click and you start raising the keel, you're actually turning it in reverse and eventually the brake will release and the keel will drop. Trust me how I know. <laughs> so um, when you are raising the keel, make sure you're hearing the click and that means that the ratcheting mechanism will raise the keel and prevent it from coming loose and accidentally dropping. Alright, so you can see that I've got the stairs in position. The cable is going through the volcano tube. I'm just putting a little tension on it to keep the wraps on the drum so the cable is being trained just while it's sitting here. The stairs went into position and all I need to do is put all the fasteners in and basically my keel cable maintenance and replacement is complete and then the bonus I get is my stairs have been revarnished. Okay folks, that completes the installation of the keel cable. The stairs are back in position with all the fasteners in and the cable is wound around. There's a little bit of tension on it to uh, help train that cable to stay on the drum. So uh, that's it. So hopefully there will be no headaches associated with keels dropping for the next four or five years. Alright folks, so one of the things that I do as part of my annual maintenance is the keel bolts. Okay, so one of the things that I'm trying to do here is um, preventive maintenance. So this is the bearing block that the keel pivots on and there's a pin that goes through the keel to the other side and there's a bearing block on the other side. These are the bolts that hold the keel to the boat. Up inside the boat is some threaded tubes that are fiberglassed into the hull. So I change these every year 
and I do that for a bunch of reasons. First of all is, is when I bought the boat and I removed the keel to do the maintenance on it and um, have it sandblasted and so I could epoxy it, one of the bolts snapped off. When that happens, it's kind of a project because when the bolt snaps off, you've got to grind the keel trunk away to expose the tubes, the threaded tubes that are inside the boat and replace them. They sell them at Catalina Direct and not that expensive. It's just kind of a project to put them back in and re-glass everything to the strength that the factory had. So I change them out every year. First of all, those are the only things that hold the keel into the boat, so I want to make sure they're strong. The second thing is I treat them with anti-seize compound. So when I remove them every year, they come out nice and easy. So it gives me the opportunity to maintain the threads and when it is time to do maintenance on the keel I know that those threaded fasteners are going to come out without snapping and the other thing is is I know if they've loosened because I check the torque on them and I have the ability to um, discover if anything's going awry if you will in the uh, annual maintenance so I'll um, show you the, the way that I do this in just a moment. So these are the keel bolts that I just took out. You can see that they're still in really good shape. The anti-seize compound is still present. They came out without an issue. And I buy these from McMaster Car. I buy them in a package of 10. They're not that expensive. They're a high-grade stainless bolt, and um, it gives me, you know, basically uh, quite a few of them. If you can buy them from Catalina Direct, but they charge a lot of money, and I buy them in bulk, so they're they're in stock, if you will. Um, they're three sixteenths, uh, excuse me, three eighths dash sixteen, which is coarse thread by one and a quarter long, and. Um, I throw these away when I take them out I throw them away because I don't want them to make it back into circulation so um, I use an inch pound torque wrench and the torque spec for the stainless fastener is 235 inch pounds I have this set just slightly um, uh, under 235 and what happens is I set it at 235 and when I tighten it it goes to zero so when I reach zero I know I've reached the torque and that way when you're under the boat upside down you're really not trying to find this super um, fine increment on the wrench you just go to the pointer till it says zero and you know you've applied the correct torque so it's a pretty simple process again the fact that this is a trailer sailor I can do it right here in the backyard and um, with that it is really the end of my keel maintenance program on an annual basis. So what I did on the inside of my uh, box that holds my torque wrench is I put right on there the torque spec for the keel bolts um, just in case I don't have a book or a manual to look it up or a computer to look it up online or I just forgot the torque spec it's right there this is the anti-seize compound I use. Um, it's similar to what you can buy in an auto parts store. It just happens to be a little more convenient. It has like a shoe polish type applicator. It keeps the mess to a minimum. So it works out good. Alright, there we have it. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you're with me this long, obviously you found it entertaining or interesting. So uh, give me a thumbs up and the like button if you would please. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next video.